Hey guys, Desletter Magic here, and huge news coming from the official at Wizards underscore Magic Twitter account. They have stated, in one week from this message, on March 9th, there will be a banner restricted list update. Mark your calendars, exclamation mark. As previously announced, we plan to give advance warning of any BNR updates going forward. So, what they mean by that is they changed the banner restricted schedule to whenever the hell they wanted. Their whole thing is they want to dance around big tournaments because they like prioritizing like 100 people or 16 people over the other 10 million people that play Magic. You know, because that makes sense. And I guess they didn't learn from Oko that when you say, well, we're not going to make the ban announcement until like two days after the big, you know, mythic tournament. And then everybody plays Oko. Nobody watches it. Everybody calls it an unwatchable mirror matchathon. All the players go and blow it up on Twitter. About like how terrible it was that that maybe that's not who you should cater to. In fact, you shouldn't preserve broken decks going into a tournament. It makes nobody want to play it or watch it or wait that long or just anything. It just don't do that. And yet, in the very article that they said, you know, here's what we're doing to change it and why, um, as far as the the ban announcements and like when they're scheduled, and they changed it to whenever the hell we want. They stated it's to avoid large tournaments. That was almost the only reason they gave. So March 9th. Now, as I said last time, it would be the most awesome prank in the history of the universe. If they scheduled a banner restrict announcement for March 9th and are like hyping it up like this. And then the announcement is that they're not banning or unbanning anything. Oh, then why'd you schedule it? We just haven't had one in a while. Just want to remind everybody that we're not going to fix shit. And by the way, I, I do feel like this might maybe be an unban. Now, there's a lot of stuff that, that I'd say requires a ban. I don't think they quite see it that way, but there's a lot of things, a lot of cards, and a lot of formats that should be banned. They're becoming extremely problematic. But they just said, March 9th, mark your calendars, exclamation mark. They're acting like it's a, like a concert or a holiday or something. Like, what, what the hell? They're hyping up a ban and restricted announcement. Have you lost your damn minds, wizards? Should we all just pull up the pickup trucks, pull down the tailgates, get the burgers and the brats going on the grill because we're going to tailgate this bitch because, woo, March 9th, mark your calendars. Don't forget to sign up to bring a dish to pass. If I lived in Seattle, I would seriously make t-shirts that say, woo, ban with shots girl on it, and then I would pull up to their headquarters and actually tailgate and grill out burgers in their parking lot. Unfortunately, I live in Wisconsin. It's not that big of an unfortunately. I would not want to live in Seattle or Renton where they actually are. For all of you who don't know the U.S. very well, Wisconsin is the best state in the entire country. But um, yeah, they're, they're generating hype for a ban announcement. A ban announcement should basically be an apology. That's what it should, it should be. Them apologizing to us, the players, for them f***ing up a format once again. They should not be hyping this up. They should be ashamed of it. And they should be ashamed that it took this long if they're going to ban something from Standard, which that is being hotly debated. Things are getting worse than Standard in other formats from what I heard. I haven't looked at it too much. Um, there's a lot of candidates being thrown out there, but uh, a lot of it's graveyard shit and free casting. Shocker, that stuff's broken again. That stuff's inherently unfair. Ban another one. Lockout prison cards. Too much mana too early. And free casting and graveyard shit. That's been almost every ban that has ever happened in the history of the game. And yet, Fires of Invention, which absolutely deserves a ban. You know they're not going to do it because Challenger decks are coming out, but uh, it deserves a ban. Allegedly, according to some very debated, like, tournament-heavy, not really based on reality stats, uh, Mono Red is still the number one deck played in Standard. And the best thing is, some of them just run Torbran, and some of them run uh, maybe Torbran, possibly not, and just Cavalcade. So there's two hyper-fast, unstoppable, problematic red decks. And I think that's why it's overcounting it, but, like, allegedly, like, one in five people are playing it. Um, by people, they mean jackasses at one specific tournament. Tournaments are not FNM. Tournaments are not the entire community. Tournaments are not the 10 million alleged uh, active players. Um, trawler decks have absolutely exploded lately, but I think it's, it's so recent that this would not be a ban for that unless they're just like, whoa, look at those numbers, boom, snap decision. But I mean, they would have had to have made that decision like last week and then boom, we're announcing it March 9th. That's too quick. I do not believe that. If anything, it'll be Torbrand that'll go, which is a shame because Fires needs to go a lot more. And in my opinion, the number one most toxic deck right now, I'd say 
on arena is is oven cats because it takes so freaking long to resolve those triggers. But in standard in general, the Thassa um, Agent of Treachery Flicker deck that that no no deck pisses me off more than that one. Not even fires. Maybe Trawler is close because there, you you just can't do anything. Trawler comes out, you lose. It's that simple. If you blow it up, they'll resurrect it. I mean, Elspeth conquers death. Like the deck is basically weakened at Bernie's. Okay. Uh, according to some recent tournaments, Adventures is still out of control. I think the innkeeper needs to be banned. I mean, you guys know, to get the game back to a comfortable state where you don't just have to play one of the top decks or you're completely screwed because it's such an astronomical uh, you know, Grand Canyon between Tier 1 and Tier 2, you really can't ban your way back to that when their philosophy has been, we're going to print overpowered shit so that we can sell it to Commander and Modern Players and make more money on Standard because our dumbasses canceled Masters. And now we need money. So yeah, you don't just undo an entire set after set after set after set design philosophy by banning 12 cards, okay? Like, they, they could and they should, but they're not going to. They will be the last band playing on the Titanic as it goes down, and the Titanic is standard. They will absolutely stick to their guns and say, no, we did this for, for you and, and for value and blah, 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 all this other bullshit. For greed is why they did it, in case you're not familiar. Greed. They wanted more money, and now they ruined the whole game because of it. So overall, with all the broken stuff that's in Standard, that it would be nice if it went away so that we could all play Standard again, and it would be nice for their pocketbooks if people started playing Standard again, because they've effectively crashed the entire thing. I mean, there is no reason that it should be $60 a box for um, the latest set. That's ridiculous. But they made the format too powerful, and people are just like, I'm just going to play Modern, or I'm going to play Commander, whatever. Screw it. So they spiked the entire format by flying too close to the sun, getting a little bit too greedy, and then, <laughs> whoops. So, I mean, maybe it's drastic enough that they're like, you, you know what? We did make a mistake. We're going to admit it. We're going to say raising the power level this high was, was too much. We're going to redo how R&D assesses cards. We're going to kick some cards out of the next couple sets before they get printed. And uh, here's the ban list of, you know, 10 cards. It, it's not impossible, but I would say there's maybe a 30% chance that they're going to ban something out of standard and a 70% chance that they're going to ban something in another format. Just realistically, I think that's what's going to happen. So it's not impossible, but it's unlikely that we'll see a change in standard, unfortunately. Because by one of their metrics, you look at the number of popular decks, there's like seven or eight of them, arguably. So they're like, yay, deck variety, diversity, cool, the format's healthy. But then you look at like, individual um decks that went up and are going in popularity and and look at like from weeks ago or even a couple months ago the tournament results that since then have kind of evened out almost every problematic deck around every problematic card that's out right now they had a tournament where by their own standards which is a above 60 percent advantage against the majority of um its its fellow tier one decks and uh representation in the top 32 it it exceeded both of those, like you wouldn't believe. Fires of Invention, I heard, was up in the 70%, and it was like half the top 16. I mean, it was ridiculous. But then during the next tournament, it wasn't. But all those decks are broken. It's just somebody found, you know, Trawler, then somebody found an Adventures in that bad, and then somebody else is like, no, nah, I'm going to stick to my guns and still play Mono Red. And other people are like, all right, about the cards for Rakdos. I'm just going to make that work. So to them, if you take a step back and look at it right now, Trawler looks problematic, Red always has looked problematic, and some of the other ones have looked problematic and have had problematic tournaments, but right, right, right now, it looks pretty even and, and diverse and unique, and there's a bunch of different decks and whatever, so they might call this healthy. So the question is, when did they make this decision? And, you know, they would undo it. That's why I think if they were like, oh my god, ban fires, and then like a couple weeks later when they were getting ready to announce it, they're like, wait, like fires isn't that played anymore? It's like 10% of decks? They could very easily pull the announcement. They could undo the decision, and we never would have known about it. So that's why I think, depending upon how they want to look at things, they might not see a problem in standard, when really the problem, the entire problem, is that they have jacked up the power level to a completely unhealthy level. Nobody wants to deal with it. Nobody wants to play with it. And Magic has become where it used to be, like around Origins, when Origins came out, you could build what you wanted and go to F&M, and if it was a good, solid, well-built deck, it didn't matter what it was, you had a really good chance of winning with it. So you could build anything, whatever your preference is. Right now, if you do not build one of the top 10 decks, you are screwed. You are going to lose. It's that simple. It, the, the, the decks are so out of control and power, 
you have no option but to net deck. And because of that, you're looking at three, four, five hundred dollar decks again. So it's not just build what you like, play something fun, build a solid deck, and you'll you'll win F and M. You know, go to go to arena, go to MTGO, play and have fun. No, it's like you will lose 100% of your games against these just disgraces of decks that are out right now. We need to go back to the power level of Origins, where you could play any of the different colors of Landfall, and you had a solid deck. Any of the tribals, you had a solid deck. That was the last time that I remember Standard actually being good and at a comfortable power level without just outlier decks that would just kill the crap out of everything in their path. And uh, if you think about it, that's right around when all the banning started after that. That is provably, with history and statistics, when things went off the rails. So I will definitely be uh, covering this Monday as well as I can. They usually post the announcement and then have a permissions problem and nobody can view it and then only in certain countries and then maybe it gets leaked early on a foreign website and then they try to pull it, but then it's on Reddit, but then it's not on the, the main site or they just post it at midnight or they do it at 8 a.m. or they just do it at like three in the afternoon when I'm working. Zero consistency here, which speaking of that, um, there's been a leak. Hit subscribe if you don't want to miss my next video covering it. There's actually been two leaks. Yep. Two new products coming out that you've never heard of. So, yeah. Good job, Wizards web team who totally takes, you know, release dates seriously. But yeah, whenever it comes out, I'll make a video ASAP. We're talking, like, real quick. So watch for that. Like I said, hit subscribe if you don't want to miss it because uh, I, I cover it heavy. If I'm covered so heavy right now, I just jumped in Time Machine. Uh, Breach and Oko are going to be banned. Oko is going to be banned in every format that he's not banned in yet. I'll see you guys next video.